In this lecture, we are going to take a look at Python data structure. Instead of dealing with a simple value such as number and string, you will see how to bunch them together in more complex structures such as list and dictionaries. A data structure is a collection of data elements that is structured in some way such as by numbering the elements. So let's take a look at Python difference data structure. So let's start with the Python built-in type sequence. So what is sequence? A sequence is a collection of values. Python has several inbuilt types of sequences. So let's take a look at a most commonly used sequence in Python which is list and tuple. So let's start with a list. So what is list? A list is a type of sequence. Lists are separated by commas and enclosed in square brackets. If you want to create a list, you can create it with a square bracket and all the list items or you can say list values are separated by commas just like this. And between these square brackets, you can use the collection of values. No matter which value you specify here, you can specify numbers, string, or even you can specify list as well. Now, let's take a look at a very simple example to understand how to create a list. For example, you might have a sequence representing a person in a database, with the first element being their name and the second is their age. So, you would simply create a variable John and you will specify equal to sign and then specify the sequence here. So, to create a sequence, we're going to start with a square bracket just like this and in the square bracket you're going to specify the values in the sequence in the single code i'm going to specify the string value first so i'm going to say here john smith so this is my first sequence value and this is a type of string then i'm going to specify next value so i'm going to specify comma here and then specify here 30. so you can notice here in the sequence we have two type of values this is a type of string and this is the type of number list is a collection of values so here we have two values first is a type of string and second is a type of number now let me just print this variable i'm going to say here print and specify here john when i execute the statement i'm going to have the list as a result this john variable is a type of list you're not limited to only specify string or numbers in the list you can even specify list inside the list for example let's say you have another list i'm going to create a variable with the iconic character harry potter and then i'm going to specify age here now if you just take a look at this code then you have two persons here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create here a database variable and to this database variable i'm going to specify list in this list i'm going to specify both these variables so in this list i'm going to specify both these list inside this database list so in this database we have two list and i try to print this database i'm going to have two list you can notice here i have here two list let me just get it off this print statement and you can notice here i have two lists in this database list so you're not limited to only add string and numbers so using this statement we just combine two lists now keep in mind to separate two values use comma here we combine sequence into sequence now keep in mind python is a case sensitive language so if you try to write john like this john then this is going to return an error message let me just execute this file I'm going to have an error message. You need to take care of all the characters. So I'm going to just get rid of this small j and specify here capital J. When I execute this statement, I'm going to have my result. Now let's take a look at some example of list. Now, as you know, list is a type of sequence. So there are certain things you can do with all sequence type. These operations include indexing, slicing, adding, multiplying, and checking for membership. Python has built-in functions for finding the length of the sequence and for finding its largest and the smallest element. Let's say you have a string variable just like this. If you try to print this statement, you're going to get a string value. But as I said earlier, string is a collection of characters or you can say a string is a just a sequence of characters. You can access each character using the index number. All elements in the sequence are numbered from 0 to upward. Let's take a look at how we can access them individually. So this variable is a type of sequence. You can access it with a square bracket. So if you just specify here a square bracket and specify here zero, then you're going to get the first character as a result. This is your first character and this is your index number zero. This is your first index, this is second and so on. Now let me just duplicate this print and let me just access my first index. When I try to print it, I'm going to get Y here as a result because y is my first index and if i just print 3 here i'm going to get my third index 
h is my third index. Now this is what we call indexing to get the character from the sequence. Now when you use negative index, Python counts from the right. If you just take a look at this statement, the Python count this sequence from the left side. What if you specify minus one here? When you specify negative index, Python counts from the right side, right from here. That is from the last element, right from here. For example, let's see if I just specify here minus one, then what do you think? What would be the result? As I said, when you specify negative number, Python count this index from the right side, right from here. So when you execute this statement, I'm going to have E as a first index. So I'm going to have this last character as a result. And when I just specify here minus two, I'm going to have S as a result, just like this. So when you specify negative number, Python count from the right side, and this is your first index, this is second, this is third, and so on. So you can easily get your last index using negative number. Indexing is very useful when working with list. For example, let's say you have a list of months and you want to get the second month from this list. You can simply say here print. Now, as I said, sequence start from zero index. So January is your zero index. February is your first index. So if you want to access February, you can specify here month and in the square bracket, you can specify here one. When you execute the statement, you're going to have your second month. And if you just specify here six, you're going to get month July. And if you want to get the last month of the year, you can simply specify here minus one. You can notice the benefit of list. You can gather all the values in the single list. If the list is not there, you need to create 12 new variables to store all these values. But using list, you can store it in a single variable. Now keep in mind, lists are mutable. Means you can change their content. Let's take a look at a very simple example. Here, I have variable member, and then I'm gonna specify list to this member variable. And in this list, I have different values. I want to change this third value. You can notice here, we have duplicate values here. As I said earlier, list is mutable, means you can change their value. So if I just see here member, and I'm going to access the index number three. To access this index number, I need to specify two here, because index start from zero. Zero, one, so I'm going to just specify here square bracket and specify here two. And I'm going to just change this value and I'm going to say here four, just like this. And when I try to print this member, I'm going to have the result something like this. I'm going to have four on the third index. If I want to change this fourth value, I'm going to just change this two to three. When I execute the statement, I'm going to have the one to seven value. So you're not limited to only use these values. You can change it whenever you want. Now you're not limited to using indexes on hard-coded string or list. You can use it with the input function as well. For example, now let's say I have here a variable and I'm gonna just get the user input using this input function. And what I want, the complete name of the user. I just want to get the first character of the name. I'm gonna just simply specify here square bracket, then I'm gonna specify here zero. And then I'm gonna just say here print name. Now when I execute this statement, Python will ask me to write my name here. I'm going to just specify here daily tuition and when I press enter, I'm going to have D as a result. You can notice we use index to get the first character. If you want, you can get any character from this list. Now you know that how to get the first index. Now what if you want to get only the first word? You don't want to get the second word from the name. You can use slicing. For example, if I just specify here colon and then specify five, and when I execute the statement, I'm going to just specify name here daily tuition when i press enter this will just slice this tuition word from this string and i'm going to have daily as a result this is what we call a slicing we're going to learn what is slicing in the next lecture so i will see you in the next one